I'm sorry once again. Hopefully this is the last time for quite a while. I've been so incredibly busy. Technically, these past few days I've been very busy making preparations. I am uh, the furthest thing from anybody that's uh, hastened to any kind of panic or hysteria. I am the total opposite of that type of person. I think even the people that don't like me will admit that fact. Before getting into this video, I have to ask a question. This is trending because apparently there's like hundreds of such videos. I have to ask the Brits. There's all these vi Brits that are washing dirty dishes and uh, they're sticking the dishes in the soapy water, you know, rinsing them off. You know, of course, the water is getting dirtier and dirtier, but importantly, it's super soapy. So there's endless videos of nice British folk, you know, washing the dishes. Yeah, so they clean all the, you know, food scraps off of it, and then they put it in the rack, <laughs> ready to be used again. The important thing here being is not really the fact that it is increasingly dirty water, but there is a mountain of evidence that shows that British people do not wash the inedible, disgusting soap off of their dishes before they put it in the rack. <laughs> to ask the British people. <laughs> Since there's a mountain of evidence that's trending, apparently it's a new uh, social media. Like, what? <laughs> to ask the British people why they don't wash the soap off of their dishes. I just have to ask that. I'm not picking on the British people. Actually, I am. Part of this video is all the stuff that keeps getting sent to me of the tyranny the abject tyranny that's going on in the UK is unbelievably off the hook. Stuff that I find quite shocking. What's his face? I don't want to mention his name since it stirs everybody up the last time I mentioned his name. He's in exile currently, but he says he's returning in October to stage a peaceful protest in front of the, the uh, horrific tyrant that is the uh, new... Uh, PM of UK. Uh, I assume that as soon as he steps foot back on UK soil that they're going to arrest him. Not for any valid reason apparently, but just because of the fact that he stirs up the desire for freedom. And, uh, you know, this is why the United States had their 1776, by the way. I'm just saying that's a fact of history. British tyranny has been known for hundreds of years and you know it's the reason why the UK I mean UK and uh, the colonies back then you know went through separate ways that was about the nicest way I could say it so um, one last point before getting into this video I have been making moves as fast as possible and knowing that we essentially have 50 days or less and if absolutely nothing happens in those 50 days, I will be, there will be nobody happier than me. Look me in my eye and tell me if you think I'm a person that is spurned on towards uh, any type of, uh, you know, chicken little, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. I'm not one of those kind of people. Uh-oh, my fireplace froze. <laughs> That's okay, it could stay frozen. I've actually been so busy, I forgot to turn my... Uh, lava lamp on. Yeah. So it takes like a really long time to kickstart. I'm going to edit that out of this video, but that's okay. Um, actually, let's just turn the computer off over here. Yeah, we don't need to see a frozen fireplace. Sorry about that. That's horrible. This is an old computer. I'm not spurned on to that, you know, enticement to any sort of fear. I mean, I'm just not. I'd like to hear from you on this and what preparations you're making. By the way, I've recommended this countless times. I got a link I'll put below. I have no affiliation towards the company selling these. They come in different size bags. I, the link I'll post below is for the most economical. This is like a pound and a half. The link I put below is to, I think it's a 10 pound bag. Um, this 
bit right here of alfalfa sprouting seeds. All you need is water and a pan. You can even have a paintbrush tray, you know, to grow an enormous amount of food. You know, you could put balsamic over top of it, olive oil. You know, there's a million different ways you could eat it. You could actually fry them up. My favorite to fry up are mung bean seeds once they've actually sprouted. But I've been making preparations. That's why I've been super, super busy, along with countless other things the past few days. Uh, this is breaking, and I've been watching this. They've arrested the guy. Um, I saw a video that was posted on Newsweek's website of uh, this guy back in 2022. He was trying to, you, uh, to recruit soldiers for the conflict uh, in uh, Ukraine. I don't want to mention his name, um, but anyway, he had two ballistic plates that were hanging on the fence and a bang stick uh, with a looked like a 30 or 40 round banana mag. It was at Mar-a-Lago. Um, the FBI and the Secret Service are all calling it an attempted, uh, I, I don't even want to say the word because of the algorithm, but A-S-S-I, you know. He was going after Orange Man, and uh, they were alerted to, to uh, the bang stick sticking through the fence at uh, his golf course. Trump was actually making his way onto the golf course, and if the Secret Service agent, at least that's the story we have, uh, hadn't spotted him, and he dropped all that stuff, and they posted pictures. So I told you all, especially in live stream, over and over and over again, but the first time they tried to take him out wouldn't be the last time. So this is a second confirmed attempt at uh, taking him out. Um, it was at uh, his national golf club in Mar-a-Lago. So he was on the fifth green, I was told, and he was making his way towards the public area uh, that's uh, you know closest to the fence. And the guy was uh, waiting I've seen the video of the guy from 2022, and you know, he seems really off his gourd. He had donated to Act Blue, and uh, he was just a skinny 58-year-old uh, radical. That's about the only words I'm willing to use on that. Um, there's a lot of things that are actually coming to a head, and that's why I've been actually working so hard, knowing that we only have about 50, day, 50 days left, more or less. Uh, but World War WW3 is uh, being stoked right now due to, you could take your pick. There's really three factors, impending financial collapse, and uh, major global conflicts have always been used to uh, wipe the slate clean, because as they say, all conflicts are bankers' conflicts. And... Uh, there's all this uh, facts that are coming out right before November the 4th. If you're not an American, you don't know what November the 4th is. I mean, you should know. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei uh, Rabkov uh, mentioned today the United States has given Kiev a uh, carte blanche to strike with long-range kinetics deep into the heart of Russia. That would be Russian for the, the country of Russia. Moscow's response will be brutal, quote-unquote. Uh, Putin has a video, and I'm no fan of him whatsoever. KGB, бывшего КГБ, Комитет Государственной Безопасности. I'm no fan of Putin. But he's warned uh, that the long-range kinetics that are being given to Ukraine is the basis for... Uh, a declaration of WAR against Russia by NATO. What your position on that is one way or another, let me know below. I'm not really interested in taking sides. I'm, I'm an American, but I'm a friend of, uh, you know, natural order and humanity. And I'm pretty sure that involves and includes basically everybody on the planet, including the Ukrainians that I know quite well, and including Russians who I know quite well. And you know, still talk to some of. Um, Russian ambassador to Washington, Anatoly Antonov, said today that there would be, uh, there's some kind of illusion in the United States that a conflict with Russia will not hit U.S. territory, i.e. the United States. Or as they say in Russia, making clear that the U.S. would be hit. This has already been given the green light. We've given NATO, you can say NATO, United States, I don't really care which. We've given 
long-range kinetics to Ukraine and given them, you know, the thumbs up, you know, to launch them deep within the borders of, uh, of uh, Russia. What your position on that, you know, one way or another is not really important. The important thing is the, the outcome of that going forward if and when, you know, Russia is backed down from a lot of stuff. You know, I, I lived in Russia. I know the Russians quite well. You never ultimately know anybody. It's like, what do they do and backed into a corner? Different countries, you can kind of have high level of predictability. I don't want to say what I think Russia will do uh, once that actually starts kicking off, but I got a good idea, but I don't want to state my position on that because it's not helpful. Even though it's an educated guess, being well educated on the Ruski Narodi, means the Russian people, I don't know. Ultimately, if anybody says they know for certain, doesn't know for certain. Russian Foreign Minister also, too, has responded to the revelations the United States is going to deploy um, nukes in Japan. Uh, we're going to launch a comprehensive military intervention against America if America starts deploying, uh, you know, plutonium and uranium to Japan. In other words, uh, nuclear-based uh, kinetics. There are several links on this, and they're easy to find. Switzerland is in what they are calling, they are calling, a, a pre-war phase. They're preparing for WW3. Elsewhere in Swil Switzerland, confirmed the military transport units are tasked with building up stockpiles of various essentials and into secret locations. Switzerland, by the way, has a lot of secret locations, you know, given the Alps and that the fact that the Swiss, the Swiss are very, very, very good at hollowing out and making tunnels in the mountains of the Schweiz, i.e. Switzerland. They're really good at it. Um, Started extensive border lockdowns from their neighbors, uh, France, Deutschland, and Italia. Secrecy and mystery surrounding the extensive preparations right now in Switzerland is extremely intriguing. Um, there's all sorts of things that are going on right now. People that are in the know, uh, what's-his-face has sold off all of Bank of America stock. What did he have in there? Like a $400 billion stake, I believe, in Bank of America. I probably have that number wrong, but he sold off a super massive amount of uh, Bank of America stock. There's a lot of people that have inside sources, like, Psht, you know, you're my buddy. You made me a lot of money and vice versa. And uh, they're talking to each other. And what we could do, being outside the sphere of this influence of the, the mega rich, is seeing the moves that they are making. We can't see it, we can't peek over the wall and look into the hidden city of the mega rich that are talking back and forth to each other. You know, they're doing trading, you know, insider level information. But what we can see is we could put our ear to the wall and say, well, you know, I can hear bulldozers over here. And I can, uh, you know, choppers are flying over there. And they're, we can tell that they're heavily laden down with stuff. And if you actually gather enough, enough anecdotal information of what the mega rich are doing, I mean, it's really, you know, they're building bunkers in New Zealand. Like, they're going at breakneck speed. I've had confirmed reports that some of the bunkers that are being built in New Zealand People are being paid quadruple their normal rate. Highly skilled people, like the best of the best of the best. In other words, we need it done like now. It's like, you move quickly, we'll pay you four times your max rate of, well, absolutely, get it done. That's a fact, and if that doesn't tell you something, you've got your head buried in a very deep, dark hole. I mean, you really do. I don't care what side you're on or... You know, whether you're lazy about uh, being prepared. You know. The idea of not being prepared is itself fundamentally self-destructive. It's like somebody, uh, you know, poo-pooing wisdom. It's a self-defeating thing. It's kind of like, uh, you know, th throwing the brown stinky stuff headlong into a fan. You know, you know it's going to come right back into your face.
you can't poo-poo wisdom and you can't speak against uh, being prepared and seeing I don't know maybe you have a wife and kids and you're just so busy that you really can't see it and I do get that I don't have a wife and kids obviously I had a wife at one point in time um, did so I, I, I do get being so preoccupied you're just busy trying to pay the bills and I'm doing the same thing I gotta do everything around here myself I don't have any time for anything um, nothing will make me happier then November the 10th, for example, or November the 5th comes along. Ah, hey, nothing happens over, you know. That's wonderful. I actually welcome and look forward to you doing that. I hope that happens. But I don't think that's going to happen. I just have absolutely no doubt. Everything is going sideways in the United States vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, we're about to, we're really already in a depression. And I could argue with you that we're into the soft intro where you slide into the deep dark waters of uh, conflict and uh, chaos and havoc, you know, as you get your feet wet in the cold dark waters. We're already entering in that phase and anybody with a half a brain can see that. But what we're doing with giving Ukraine the go ahead even Elon Musk, I think it was like five days ago. I don't really like him one way or the other. You know, I'm not praising him by quoting him on this. He, he sees that this is a really dark thing to be concerned about. When you say you're concerned about something, it doesn't mean you're frantic and you're running around with your, you know, your hands over your eyeballs running in a circle and screaming. It means you're aware of what is and you act accordingly. Switzerland, if anybody is famous for preparing for what they see on the horizon, and there is, I hate to say this, but there's a lot of evil and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of money in Switzerland. If any country has got a full insight, Switzerland, by the way, well, Switzerland's neutral. Switzerland's never been neutral. That's the biggest lie I've ever heard in my life. Switzerland is neutral. <laughs> They've never been neutral. I got nothing against Switzerland. It'd actually be my number one place to drive around in a car in the Alps and you know look at the you know the places that look like uh, out straight out of the movie Sound of Music I'd love to drive one. I can't never afford that never ever could afford that but they have an insight into what's happening they are by their own words in a pre-war phase of extreme planning if Switzerland is in a is in uh, you know shuffling around lots and lots of uh, uh, pawns on the chessboard and they say that they're in a pre-wars this is not conjecture this is confirmed fact by the way you can find plenty of sources out there for that you know doesn't that tell you anything what's his face uh, selling off every share of uh, Bank of America it's a good thing because the most evil bank in the United States is that particular bank by the way So I told you, everybody, like for the past two months, roughly, uh, you know, after Orange Man, you know, they tried to tra take out Orange Man. Pew! I said, let, let, I said, I said, hi, that wasn't it. There's going to be another time. And today was that time. It happened a few hours ago. He was positioned, waiting for Orange Man to make his way, I guess, to the sixth hole on the golf course, which is the closest to the outer perimeter of fencing. Uh, Secret Service released a picture of his bang stick that he dropped and two backpacks that were not really backpacks, they were holders for ballistic plates. There are these uh, fiber reinforced ceramic ballistic plates. I have a few of those myself. My buddy who's in the surplus business uh, gave me. They're very valuable. But uh, even the FBI admits this wasn't some you know, uh, lone doofus who decided to do something on a whim. I've seen the video of this guy from Newsweek, but... I've been making moves. I, I will return to normal starting today, but I apologize for being absent for the past few days. But that's what I've been doing. This is the reason why I sold off all my silver about 
five months ago. Sold it all off. And, uh, you know, I bought another piece of land and a cabin that has two springs on it. I've shown pictures and videos of that in live stream. And uh, I've been moving as fast as I can on that front. Drove to Louisville yesterday, which I, I hate that city, by the way. And uh, I don't know if people think I just make videos, by the way. I had to mention this at the end of this video. I think people just think I just make videos and do live stream. I was fixing a mechanical device yesterday that was so dirty, all the effort to get the, the filthy black uh, tarry grease out from under my nails wasn't working. So a few hours ago, <laughs> so I didn't look like a total bum, I had to trim off all my nails. I mean, I was washed my hands like a million times. And I was up to my elbows and this nasty, dirty uh, mechanical machine. It was just filthy, filthy dirty. Uh, I get my hands dirty. I do fix things and build things, uh, doing leather work. Um, leather work is uh, way down because everybody's broke. And the evil that is, is trying to collapse the world. It's called Agenda 2030 for a reason. It is going on. The further in time we go, more reinforcement is announced to say, yes, there's... Here's another tick on the chart proving it. You can say, well, you know, things have calmed down. I'm going to, you know, rub out some ticks on the chart saying that it absolutely is going to happen. Now, that's not happening. It just keeps escalating. My buddies in Australia tell me about the creeping tyranny that's going on there. And, uh, by the way, the more they push against it and say it's disinformation, you know, for a fact that it's there and, uh, there's this website that's run by the Australian government. I don't want to name it. I was reading from it. And I was talking about the, the, the social credit system. It said, false, there is no social credit system in Australia. The use of CCD technology in the Sydney Mardi Gras parade or a recommendation to require people to provide 100 points of ID to access social media does not signal the implementation. of the I've asked Australians. They said, yeah, it's coming. So the disinformation, the more they tell you it's disinformation, the more you should be aware that eh, it's not disinformation. <laughs> this creeping tyranny that's just happening, you know, it escalates and it slows down. Right now we're in a kind of a slow phase. But what I know is coming these next 50 plus days, what's going to happen then? Um, that's where I've been the past few days. Words are cheap. Other than me talking in live stream or in video is the only time I'm ever talking. I hate talking. I don't like to talk. Some people love the sound of their own voice. Blah, 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 blah. Zip it. I can't stand talking. Literally, I love talking to people in the live stream, you know. I'm making this video and I'm flapping my lips. Yes, the tattooed monkey is. But I am not a talker. I'm always in deep thought, writing. And I have my head on a swivel, and I can see what's happening in this world. I will remind you, as I've reminded you many, many countless times, and if you don't believe this, then there's something fundamentally wrong with you, because it's a hardcore, undeniable fact. And you should memorize this for the rest of your life. Civilization is the thinnest crust kind of like an orange peel right which is not that thin relative to the orange civilization is the thinnest crust over top of the largest most dangerous most powerful most cataclysmic volcano you could ever imagine All right for pop before pompeii you know popped its cork and devastated everything not that we have video footage of that, but there's a mountain of evidence. It was the most beautiful, idyllic paradise. Weather was awesome. The food was awesome. The scenery was awesome. Everything about it was awesome. It was the Roman, uh, uh, Greco-Roman uh, playground. Yay, they've got a few movies about Pompeii. 
which of course are mostly accurate, but there's still a lot of falsehood in them. I had no idea. It's like, yeah, this is, here in about 24 hours, this whole place is going to uncork, and then it's going to look like a Mad Max post-apocalyptic wasteland. Super beautiful, super idyllic, super awesome, super everything, to Mad Max post-apocalyptic wasteland. And that's what's happening with civilization right now. And civilization is that thin crust, kind of like Pompeii. And if you don't realize that and plan accordingly, then you, <laughs> you just, ignorance is bliss. It is right up into the point where it bites you in the boo-boo. There's the other opposite where you're stressed out and miserable and worried all the time. <laughs> this is bad too. But something way worse than that, you know, is uh, living in ignorance because it is wonderful right before it bites you in the boo boo. And that's what's about to happen. Look into my eyes and tell me I'm lying when I say that. I'll catch you in live stream. Sorry the fireplace burned out. <laughs> it's okay. Old computer anyway. I'll start it. I'll reboot it again. Thanks so much for watching. Lux Veritas. I also waited too long to start the lava lamp. My bad. <laughs>